guys, today I will be your amino glycoside. So let's get to know me. Now let's begin getting to know me in my drug name. So for my generic name, I have several names available. So I am also known as amikacin, juntamycin, neomycin, um, streptomycin, and tabramycin. For mechanical name, it's difficult to read. So here it is. My brand names available here in the Philippines and internationally are the following. We have the Toby Pro, the Humatin Pro, the Amikin Pro, the Garamycin Pro, we have the Amikin Pediatrics, we also have the Amikase, the Bethkiss, the Catrix, the Neofradin, the Neotab, Mycifradine, and the Zemdrin. Therapeutically, I am classified as an antibiotic and an anti-infective. And my pharmacologic classification is aminoglycoside. My pregnancy category falls on category D, which means that there is a positive evidence of human fetus risk from the data gathered in human studies. But the potential benefits from the use of the drug in pregnant women may be acceptable despite the potential risk. Now, how do aminoglycosides work? How do I work? So, I am a bactericidal, which means that I kill bacteria right away. So, I inhibit protein synthesis in susceptible strains of gram-negative bacteria. I irreversibly bind to a unit of a bacteria's ribosomes, leading to a misreading of, ge of the genetic code and cell death. Now, let's go to my pharmacokinetics. Let's start with the absorption. I am poorly absorbed in the GI tract but is rapidly absorbed via intramuscular injections. So, I reach the peak level within 1 hour and my half-life is within 2 to 3 hours. I am widely distributed throughout the body and I can cross the placenta and the breast milk. I am not metabolized and I am excreted via urine. So I, aminoglycoside, is indicated for the treatment of serious infections due to susceptible strains of neg gram-negative bacteria. So this gram-negative bacteria includes the Pseudomonas species, we have the E. coli, we have the indole positive and indole negative Proteus species, we have the Providentia species, we have the Krebsella enterobacter serentia species, and we have the Acinetobacter species. I am contraindicated to patients with allergy to any of the components of the drug, those with low calcium levels in the blood, those with dehydration, those with Parkinsonism, myasthenia gravis, and a skeletal muscle disorder. I am also contraindicated to patients with kidney impairment and those with a disorder in the nerve that controls hearing and balance. And lastly, I am contraindicated to pregnant women. Now let's go to my side and adverse effects. So for the central nervous system, I may cause neuromuscular blockade and autotoxicity. For the genitourinary system, I may cause um, nephrotoxicity and azotemia. So, azotemia is a condition that takes place when the kidney is damaged by the disease or an injury. In this condition, the kidney cannot get rid enough nitrogen waste from the blood. For the skeletal and muscular system, I may cause arthralgia or joint pain and acute muscular paralysis. We are done learning from most of my information. Let's go to the nursing responsibilities before, during, and after the administration of aminoglycosides. Now, before the nurse administer aminoglycoside to the patient, the nurse must, of course, first assess if the patient has any of the following contraindications in order to prevent further complication. The nurse must also perform physical assessment and culture and sensitivity testing. The nurse must also conduct orientation and reflex assessment as well as auditory testing. Of course, the nurse must also get the patient's vital sign and perform the renal and hepatic function testing. 
So during the administration of the drug, the nurse must of course check the reports from the culture and sensitivity test. The nurse must also ensure that the patients receive full of the dosage of the amino glycosides as prescribed by the physician. The nurse must also monitor the injection site and monitor for signs and symptoms of any of the adverse effects such as nephrotoxicity, neurotoxicity, and bone marrow suppression. The nurse is responsible also in providing safety measures, providing small frequent meals, and adequate fluid. Lastly, during the administration of the drug, the nurse must of course provide patient teaching. So after the drug administration, the nurse is responsible in monitoring the patient's response, monitoring for any signs and symptoms of adverse reaction, and in evaluating the effectiveness of the health teaching plan as well as the effectiveness of the drug and the comfort measures provided. So those are the things that you need to know about aminoglycosides and the nursing responsibilities in administering the drug to the patient. I hope you have a safe day ahead and God bless.